All right, so my question here, uh, how much do health insurance exchange customers save on their premiums when they purchase uh, a narrow network plan? So this is uh, a research that um, has emanated from our LDI uh, narrow network working group, and so I would like to uh, acknowledge many of which are the folks in the room, all the folks that have worked together, not only on, on this project, um, but on uh, all the work we're doing around narrow networks and my co-author, uh, Zuleha Sida. Okay, so uh, we've had a lot of talks on the ACA marketplace. Um, it created conditions um, for the expansion of narrow provider networks. ACA marketplace has, is, you know, the, the objective here is a more organized marketplace uh, to create more competition for health insurance. Um, and the way they did it was providing a choice within a more, within structure. And so we had some common rules and regulations made choice easier, but along with that um, uh, came uh, fewer options for, uh, um, for issuers, for carriers, to design plans that had lower cost options. And that really created a, um, the emergence of narrow networks as an opportunity to create variation in plan design. And so now that we have more narrow networks, there are just a lot of burning issues um, in, in health policy around narrow networks. One is provider list accuracy. Another consumer awareness uh, uh, among their providers uh, and the provider networks and the plans they choose, um, issues of balance billing and uh, network adequacy, and all these revolve around the issue of transparency. So what we set out to do a couple years ago was um, measure, uh, create a database of every provider in every network for every plan sold on the exchange, or at least every silver plan. And so uh, we scraped um, 400 websites and measured uh, network size among all plans. And so what this bar here shows, and then we uh, chopped up the, the networks and we identified them by t-shirt size, extra small, small, medium, and large, and that's what these, um, that's what these colors are. So 21% of uh, plans or networks uh, on the exchange are uh, extra small, and another 26% are small, by small like at least if 25% or less of the providers in your uh, rating area or in your, in your area um, are part of the network that, uh, in the insurance plan that you purchase. Um, so this came out uh, in the summer in an issue brief. And then uh, this group called uh, Consumer Checkbook, they took our idea and they created a, a website that's connected to Get Covered uh, Illinois. And they've done this for Missouri too. These are both federally facilitated marketplaces. And they added a column, so this is kind of research to action that shows the, uh, the network sizes for the plan. So this is starting to emerge the tools um, uh, on, onto the marketplace itself. We also showed a variation in, in by state, uh, which I'm not going to spend much time on because I'm running out of time. And I want to show you this one bit of research we did to really look um, whether uh, narrow network plans are indeed cheaper. Um, so uh, narrow network plans could, uh, might affect premiums by removing high pro cost providers from a network. They could pay lower reimbursement to providers um, in exchange for uh, volume discounts uh, or in exchange for volume. Uh, favorable risk selection may also lead to lower prices um, as a result of removing providers that high cost beneficiaries prefer. So the question is, do we see this relationship in the ACA marketplace? How much less is a plan with a narrow network? So um, uh, what we did is we used this data set to estimate how price of product changes. Um, as characteristics change, so we use a hedonic pricing model. Um, the price here is a log of planned premiums. We use the premium for an individual, plan for 27-year-old. The characteristics, of the key characteristic here that we included is network size of the plan uh, within the rating area with which, and the rating area is the uh, geographic unit by which prices vary for plans offered on the exchange. We had dummies for insurance carrier, dummies for rating area. We had uh, other plan design characteristics and plan type in our regression. Uh, we had uh, 6,219 plan rating area observations among the 340 networks that we observed. And here's the main result. Um, a drop from a typical network, uh, which is around like 30, 31% of providers, um, to a narrow network, say 10%, so one standard deviation change in network size, lowers premiums by 10.5%. So the average premium of a silver plan 
is $267, that's a drop of $28.